Good morning, everybody. I love hearing that buzz in the air of excitement, and we're getting ready to worship God together. Does everybody have your bulletin? Uh, the Gloria and the Sanctus later in the service are on the inside of your bulletin, so have that ready. We'll be singing that in a moment. And with that, I'm going to say I'm excited to be here with you, and then I'm going to get quiet, and we'll get ready to worship God together. Our gathering hymn is number 645. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Gloria is inside your bulletin. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God. Oh. 
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When the people saw that Moses had delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them and formed it in a mold and cast an image of a calf. And they said, and they said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being as the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, this stiff-necked, they are. Now let me alone so that I may, my wrath may burn, not against them, and I may consume them, and you will make a, and you and I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, the God, and said, O oh Lord, how does your wrath, wrath burn hot against your people whom you've brought up out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath. Change your might and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of the heaven, and the land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall live in it forever. And so the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring to his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will say portions of Psalm 106 by half verses, responsibly. Hallelujah, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Who can declare the mighty acts of the Lord? And show forth all his praise. Happy are those who act in justice. And always do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people. And visit me with your saving help. That I may see the prosperity of your elect and be glad with the gladness of your people. That I may glory in your inheritance. We have sinned as our forefathers did. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. Israel made a bull calf at Horeb. Worshiped the molten image. And so they exchanged their glory for the image of an ox that feeds on grass. They forgot God, their savior who had done great things in Egypt. 
wonderful deeds in the land of Ham. And fearful things at the Red Sea. So he would have destroyed them had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath from consuming them. A reading from Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I loved and longed for, my joy, crown, stand firm in the Lord, in his way, my beloved. I urge Euphoria and urge Strychne to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness, gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is anything excellent, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel hymn is number 487. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. 
The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to tell you a little story. I'm going to use the word they instead of he or she, because this can be anybody. So someone was walking down a street one day, and they're just walking along and not really paying attention to where they're going, enjoying all of the stuff around them, and bam, they fall in a hole, big hole. And they're down there at the bottom of the hole, and it's like, where am I? How did I get here? This is terrible. I can't see anything. I don't know what happened. And it takes them forever to get out. And so a little while later, they're walking down the same street. And they're walking along, and all of a sudden, bam, they fall down in that same damn hole. <laughs> but this time, they realize that they had fallen in a hole. They realize that they were down there where it was dark, and they knew where they were, but they can't figure out what happened. And it took them a really long time to get out. down the road, walking down the same street. They know there's a hole there, but they get distracted. And as they're going along, they trip and they fall in that hole. They know where they are, they know they fell in there, but it's not their fault. There was no lighting, there was no sawhorse over the hole. No, there was no sign to warn me that hole was there to remind me, even though I've fallen in it a couple times, there was nothing there to prevent me from falling in. It's not my fault. And it takes them forever to get out. They're going down the same road again. They know that there's a hole there. They know that there's no protection because there's nothing keeping them falling in. It's not their fault. And they're going along and they decide they'll just kind of go around it this way, but you know it's a slippery slope and bam, they're right down in the hole. And it's still not their fault, but they know exactly how it happened. They get out pretty quick that time. Walking down the road. Fall in that same hole. They knew it was there. They knew they'd been in it before. They knew it took a lot of effort and energy to get out. They fell in it anyway, but this time they knew it was their own fault. And they get out right away. And they vow to take, to not fall in that same hole again. And therefore, the next time they take a different road. I think this is what has happened time and time again with the Israelites, with Moses. They keep falling in the same damn hole. Anytime God doesn't produce exactly what they want, anytime God doesn't please them specifically and quickly, doesn't meet their immediate needs, even though miracle after miracle after miracle has happened, 
it's God's fault we're out here, or for, it's Moses' fault, it's God's fault that we're out here, we don't have any food or water. It's God's fault that we're having hardship out here. It's God's fault that we turn away from God because God isn't quick enough to get our me needs met. In our story today, the Israelites had said to Moses, look, you go up and talk to God. We're not going up there. We couldn't take it. You go talk to God for us. So Moses does. He's up there getting the stone tablets. But you know what? It's taken a while. It's taken too long. They start getting impatient. They start getting restless. They start forgetting all the stuff that got them to this place, and they forgot anticipating what it is they're waiting for. They're waiting for Moses to come down and tell them what God has to say. And they lose patience. And so what do they do? Again, they take matters into their own hands. They start to doubt. They say, we feel stupid for waiting around for Moses and God. We better do something ourselves because we're not stupid. And they, what do they do? Their priest, Aaron, Aaron who had been Moses' speaker, that Aaron had been present for all of these Exodus things and actually speaking instead of Moses and holding the staff and doing all these things, he's their designated priest. And it's his idea, you know, he got the people, they're restless, they're, they're reveling, they're, you know, complaining, and, and he's like, you know what? We, yeah, we better do something. And so he has them give up all their gold and they make the, make the golden calf, which is a god with a little g. And God gets really mad, right? But Moses intercedes for the people and says, look, you've done all this stuff, but he kind of is almost in a way, almost kind of trying to shame God, I think. Look, you did all this stuff. Do you really want to wipe them out and have the Egyptians say, you know, they weren't the chosen people or you weren't the good God? Do you really want to ruin your reputation, God, by wiping out the Israelites at this point? So God changes God's mind. God turns away from God's wrath. So therefore, intercession works. But back to the people who continually fall in the same hole, continually try to take matters into their own hands, continually start to doubt and fall away the minute God doesn't produce on a timely basis. God doesn't give them what they want when they want it. And they fall in that same hole. But it's not their fault. If God had only come down faster, if God had only you know, whatever they wanted, I never would have fallen away from God. If God would only produce my timetable, I will never doubt. I will never fall away. I will never stop believing. And if I do, it's God's fault. That's when we continue to fall into the same sin over and over and over. I myself have wrestled with some of the same sins over and over and over. And we do, we do. But I think the key is we have to take responsibility for our own journey. We have to own up to the fact that there are things that God is not going to control for us. God is not going to dictate to us. God is not going to remove every pitfall from our path. Nowhere in scripture does it say God make that God makes our paths straight. There is in scripture that tells us to make God's path straight. God, we make God's path straight into us. We can control that. We were discussing free will in our coffee talk earlier and that notion of, well, if God is in control of everything and everything's working out just the way God always planned, what does that say about free will? So whether or not God could, could prevent them, those Israelites from falling away or not, isn't the point. God is not going to do that. And God is not going to behave according to our expectations and timetable. 
I know so many times in my life that my timetable didn't match God's timetable and it was really irritating. Some of those are times when I've shook my fist at God. You know, I can't wait any longer or hurry up or, you know, whatever it is. But in retrospect, looking back, I can say without exception, God's timing has always been perfect. That doesn't mean it's comfortable. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to feel restless waiting. Where the Israelites continue to get into trouble, where they continue to fall in the hole, is not recognizing what God is giving them, but rather focusing on what God is not giving them. They're focusing on absence and lack and delay. Instead of, what about God and Moses have trusted us to carry on with the teachings they've given us already? And knowing that God will act in God's good time and in the fullness of time, it will all be perfect. Taking responsibility. We have to recognize the pitfalls in our own path, in our own journey, see them for what they are, and decide to go around. We are responsible for that in that sense. And God is going to let us go whatever way we want. God is going to usually let us fall in whatever hole may be before us if that's what we decide we're going to do. And what is, when does that happen? Sometimes, and I've done this, we go up to that hole, that pitfall, that same sin we keep falling into, and jump right in. <laughs> because it's kind of fun this time. I'm going to, but I'll repent later. But oftentimes, we're just paying attention to everything else. We're, we figure, you know what, we're going to just do it. And we fall. We fall in, we fall in, we fall in. God doesn't want us to be in that hole. But I want to tell you another little story. And part of me, while I scroll back the, the roll of time, and I'm going to be a therapist for a while here. I worked for a long time with really out-of-control people. And before I went to seminaries, most of you know, I worked in a residential treatment, semi-secure, with uh, juvenile sex offenders. So there was this one kid. Now, they were all culpable. They were going to go to prison if they didn't do it. This was serious business. But they, and they were kids. They were teenagers. Okay? There was this one kid. He was kind of cute. He was a good kid. I mean, I, I mean really, in a, you know, he was a good kid. I really liked him. He was cute in so many ways. He seemed so I innocent because he was ignorant. He wasn't very mature. He hadn't had time to really grow up. Now, I, I really wanted to, him to have a better life. I wanted to help him. Cute kid, sex offender. Okay. So this, it, he often would act out when he didn't feel he was getting enough attention or if the staff had, you know, been strict with him. This was a semi-secure setting, so they, were, they couldn't leave, and they were filmed all the time, and they were always supervised. But there were two specific timeout rooms where we could, we would close the door. Now, they had windows in them. They always had to be attended. We didn't just stick them in there, and we had to continue to check on them. And so if a kid was in there, I would come back every little while and see if they decided to turn it around and start uh, behaving well, which meant working their program, respecting each other, doing what staff told them, blah, blah, blah. And uh, this kid, you know, it's like, it's not my fault I'm in here. The staff was mean to me, or the staff lied to me, or, you know, they told me one thing here, and they did something different. You know, it's not my fault. You could just see going through this, okay? And then, over time, this kid could admit Yes, I, I just want your attention. It's like, you know, I'm going to behave when Melinda gets here. Well, you can't feed into that, right? You're not going to give him that attention. So to say to, to him, I said to many, 
young people over my former career. You can sit in your stuff, only substitute a different S word. You can sit in your stuff all you want. Stinks in there. I'm not crawling in there with you. But you let me know. I'll be right here when you decide to crawl out. And they would eventually, at least for a while, and we'd go on with a better way. But this kid wasn't ready to crawl out of his stuff yet, and so I was walking away. I wasn't going to even give him any attention at all. I said, I know you're just getting negative attention. I'm not going to give it to you. Let me know when you decide to turn it around. And I walked away. And this cute, nice kid who, in, if I hadn't had him in this program, would have been just, you know, one of the kids you like in school. Came after, Melinda, Melinda, please don't go. And so please, he was crying, please don't go. Come back, I promise this time I'll be good. I promise this time I'll do it right. Please come back, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And it took every amount of gut that I had to keep walking, go in my office and shut the door. Okay, that's the love that he needed. That's the correction that he needed. I think God does that with the Israelites and gets mad and has tough love. God's mercy always overshadows God's judgment. But at the same time, reality therapy means, like I would say with these kids, I think God says this to us. I'm not God and this isn't the same thing, but it's just an example. Boy, you've really gotten yourself in a bad spot. I'll be interested to know how you work it out. Boy, you've really messed up this time. That must feel, you must feel really stupid or you must feel really sad or you, whatever it is you feel. Let me know what you decide to do to get, get it turned around. I think God has to, sometimes it's like, oh God. But you know what? Go ahead, revel, make your gods. Let me know when you decide to come back, and I'll be here. That doesn't mean we get to do everything we want, but if we're going to sit down in the bottom of a dark, wet hole, we have to decide how long we're going to stay in there. We get to decide how long it's going to take us to claim our journey and crawl out and maybe join hands with our Savior who can keep us from falling in that hole time and time again. God's love is pure and absolute. But I know from my own experience, often, God's love is silent. God's love is experienced in absence. God's love often can be tough love. Continuing on page 358, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, as spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all of our heart and all of our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Franklin and Carol, our bishops, for Melinda, our rector, Barry and Jerry, our clergy associates, for Carolyn, our postulant, and for all bishops and other ministers and people, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. For Donald, our president, Stephen, our governor, Tom, our mayor, and for all the leaders of all nations. Lord, have mercy. For the city of Billings and for every city and community and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, or water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who have been injured or lost their lives or their homes and businesses because of storms and wildfires the work of Episcopal Relief and Development. We pray for those on our prayer list, Jean G., Barbara G., Joan G., Bob G., Carolyn G., Doris E., Glenda D., Anthony, Rose, Sonny, Larry, Amanda, Carol, Bill D. Jr., Gary S., Shelley, Charles E., Hyman, Julie F., Gabby, Mary Jane, Ginger G., Tom E., Josie and Charlie G., Dory, Jane, Bob G., Bob R., Ben, KJ, Melissa, Lee, and Jan. For those who serve in harm's way and in our nation's military, Casey, Sandy, Stephen, Alex, Meredith, Kendall, Chris, Chad, Jeremy, Jan, and Michael, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and oppressed, for the unemployed, for the destitute <coughs> and prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Mary Lou Hatfield, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Uh, that we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without approach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Defend us, deliver us from thy compassion. Protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. Luke and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our lives to Christ, our God. To you, O Lord, our God. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Swaziland, in South Africa. Ulaina, Namkambu, Wanum Toya. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Andrew Philipsburg, Lisa Kelly, Director. We pray for our preschool and for our vestry and warden and for our parishioners, Tom and Kim Weber, Ruth Weinfurter, Dick and Sharon Wood, Kate Woodruff, Marge Jacob. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Continuing on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Be with you, Kim. Then ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name. Bring offerings and come into God's courts. Our offertory hymn is number 321.
dear. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. 
in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Moses and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Amen. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. The prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Sacred Spirit. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of God's hand. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 569.
Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.